At the T-minus three-minute mark, tape recorders on board the spacecraft were turned on. These recorders record both voice and data. WOMMLP operating out of Burlington, Vermont, 105.9 in the radiator, it's the Rocket Shop. I'm your host, Tom Proctor. With me tonight is Giant Peach. How's it going, guys? It's going great. How are you doing, Tom? I'm pretty good. Uh, just the two members this evening. I uh, usually have uh, a few more than that. It's a bit of a broken social scene these days. Mm -hmm. uh, kind of subscribe to the idea that the more people you have that know your music, the better. <laughs> and... Um, yeah, it's been good. As people move to different places, to and from, it's been nice to just have people coming through. Right. Um, but this is this is a really good setup. This is one we're, we're comfortable with. I've got Thomas with me. Hey. 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 Yeah, do you guys just want to quickly introduce yourselves? Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, so uh, I'm Harrison. I am the only consistent member of the Peach these days. And... Uh, I grew up in New Jersey, and it's not that bad. <laughs> and I went to Middlebury College, which is where I met Thomas and a lot of the other people who are in the Giant Peach. And we just like to uh, peel back the layers of subjective detail and, and give you guys stories that everybody can relate to. And uh, That's what we're here to do today. Wonderful. Do you want to uh, kick off with a song so people can get an idea of what your music about? Sure. Do you want to introduce yourself? <laughs> sure. <laughs> My name's Thomas. Um, I am the the cohesive piece of the broken social scene. People are uh, moving away, but I just moved to Burlington and have started to do some vocals and piano with the Giant Peach. Yeah. Wonderful. Right. Cool. This song's called Sleepless. It's uh, the eponymous single from an upcoming album of ours. I wrote it very late at night. <laughs> can't sleep again Sounds like the sky is coming down outside It's drowning out this restless time And you're on my mind I thought the distance might have kept you But I missed you since I left you even more so if I drive these 30 miles and we grin Do some chai and then say hi, how have you been? Wrap me in your arms and ask how have you been? Well I've been fine But I sleep much worse without you babe Sleep much worse without you and I've been trying And I know That how we left things wasn't good at all But hear this and you should recall The times The times that we've had When we danced in the rain together hey, The weather wasn't ever all that bad so when I drive these 30 miles and we grin Pour some chai and then say hi, how have you been? Maybe darling, would you kiss me once again? Cause I've been trying You know I sleep much worse without you babe I sleep much worse without you Without you yeah, I can't sleep So I'm dreaming I'm writing songs I'll never sing to you I know the wrongs I did to you were done So are we 
But while you're fast asleep and far away You got me sleepless thinking, babe You are driving me wild Driving me wild You are you are driving me wild. Driving me wild. You are, yeah. You are driving me wild. Driving me wild. You are, yeah. You are driving me wild. Driving me wild, me wild. You are, yeah. you are driving me wild. You are, yeah. you are driving me wild. You are, you are driving me wild. No, I see much worse without you, babe. I see much worse without you. Damn peach there. Um, so, as you were just mentioning, you uh, you've gone through quite a few iterations uh, since your inception. Um, how did this all start? Who's come in? Who's go out? And uh, yeah, where are you at now? All right. Well, the giant peach. Got us started at Middlebury College. It was in my senior year, so it was kind of probably the latest we could have done it. I had uh, been playing with the idea of doing music for a long time. I was a music major, and I had a bunch of songs that I was sitting on. They were the first songs I'd ever written, and I got my best buddy, uh, Max Joshua, who is a tremendous musician, like the absolute best. Um, best guitarist, I, was, I know. Best guitarist, yeah. <laughs> And we know some good guitarists. And we were really lucky to get Max uh, on board. And he and I got together and over the course of a semester just recorded an entire set of songs in my dorm room. Uh, it was our first experience making music together and recording music. And we ended up tracking it twice, um, some of those songs three times, because uh, it turns out it's really hard. But we did end up with a good sounding record and we released that. Uh, it's called Pulling Teeth. And that was sort of the debut of the Peach. But then we had this problem, because we had all these songs, um, and we had no way to perform them. We didn't have a live band. It was just Max and I in a dorm room, and we brought in as many of our friends as we could. Uh, so out of that grew this scene of people. Uh, we have a bunch of different friends, some of whom come from backgrounds in classical music. Uh, our violinist and sometimes keyboardist, Gloria Breck, is a really, really tremendous classical musician, both on violin and the piano. Uh, Max, on the other hand, comes from a blues background. I was predominantly a, a mediocre jazz pianist before this. Um, we have Mike Nunziante from a band called Alpaca, uh, which is a really sort of uh, compassionate and heart-forward folk band. And uh, it just kind of became this sort of mishmash from a bunch of different genres and we all brought what we had from our respective musical backgrounds but despite that we all spoke the same language and it was really amazing to get into a room with all these people and be able to make music and then along the way we picked up Jacob Shashua who plays drums um, we have Liam Lundell uh, he plays the bass for us now and he's uh, the most solid bassist I know and uh, we've also collaborated with other people Along the way, we brought in Pat Freeman from the Fever Dolls on the drums a couple of weeks ago, subbing in. Mm -hmm. And uh, most recently, we got Thomas. Hey. Welcome, Thomas. <laughs> and, what do you, and so you found Thomas at uh, Middlebury. And so, Thomas, what do you do at Middlebury? So I just graduated in May, but um, <coughs> Harrison and I both were in the a cappella scene oh, at, don't talk about at that. Middlebury. <laughs> Jeez. So, I mean, he said he came from jazz. I truly don't know what my music background would be besides acapella. I love music. I've been singing my whole life. My parents both singing, play some piano and guitar, but um, it has very much been about vocals for me. Um, but Harris and I just connected. I literally ran into him on a run and we were like, hey, we should, we should get together. Yeah. And um, You guys having a big conversation while running? Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> sort of short, uh, 
It was an abbreviated conversation. <laughs> right. But we made puns. plans for, for, for a longer conversation in the future. <laughs> and realized that we really both enjoyed playing together. And yeah. our boys sound good together. Yeah. Thomas was certainly someone I was sort of peripherally aware of at Middlebury, just by virtue of running in similar circles. But we uh, probably had our first conversation pretty recently, which has been a blessing. Now we're conversing in music. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so as you were mentioning, you know, there was a lot of people on that first album. I was reading in the Seven Days um, review of it that there was over a dozen instruments uh, that were some of which are all on one track. Um, as your first uh, foray into recording, as well as just recording an album, how did you find um, putting that many layers on onto a tune? Was this the first time you've done this, or was, have you experimented this before on your own in your own time? I've definitely been experimenting with recording and producing music since I was in high school, and my uncle got me a um, like sort of digital audio workstation software just to play around with. But it, this was a new endeavor. For sure. Uh, recording drums seems to be the most confusing combination of art and science, and I still don't think that I've totally cracked it. Um, and yeah, we, we tried to bring in as many people as possible. I think oftentimes my imagination is more elaborate than my uh, sort of execution. capability, yeah, <laughs> execu <laughs> execution can keep up with. And that certainly has been evident in, in the music that I've. Um, created. I, I often am trying to balance this broad vision that I have in my head with the sort of technological and um, ability concerns that I have in the present. But it's something that we're getting better at. And uh, this new album that we're working on, Sleepless, is a much more cohesive uh, piece of work, both in terms of songwriting and Sonically, recording-wise, it's much more atmospheric and textural, and I uh, feel like we're getting closer to matching the map of the music I have in my head to the sort of territory that we're producing, which is exciting. How much of it is uh, that kind of map in your head, and how much of it is influence from the other musicians that kind of come into it? So how, how, many, how many kind of like layers are you actually kind of like creating and going, right, I need you to record it like this, mm -hmm. and then how much is uh, other people's influence? Certainly every thing that's special about the Giant Peach comes out of the fact that this is a collective of people and everybody's bringing their own ideas. Um, that's something that I, I believe in wholeheartedly. I have a little historical tidbit that the uh, Enlightenment is sort of correlated <laughs> with the rise of the coffee shop. It's generally attributed to two things. The first is that people weren't constantly drinking beer anymore, uh, which, as you can imagine, is actually pretty good for critical thinking. <laughs> uh, but secondly, because people could get together in coffee shops and hang out and have conversations and share ideas. And, um, you know, I think I, I've had the occasional good musical idea, but it was nothing compared to what I've been able to come up with when working with my friends and people who are able to bring their own cool things and say, oh, that's really awesome, what if we did this thing? Um, that makes a lot of good noises. Just a couple nights ago, before Thanksgiving, we got together with Max, who was visiting from LA, and we're putting on harmonies for one of the songs on the new album. And it was exactly that. It's, it's very much a collaborative effort. Everyone is saying, ooh, what if, it, what if it sounded like this? And now there's a part in there with three part harmonies that just weren't there two weeks ago because we were all in the same room. Mm -hmm. It's a really fun process. It's very exciting. So you're mentioning this, uh, the new album you've got coming out, um, Sleepless, um, and I was reading that you're looking to get this out 2019, yep. uh, which would make sense as we're almost there already. <laughs> um, sonically speaking, how different is it? Uh, is it even genre? Is it like genre wise? Is it quite different or have you kind of mm. got your kind of core that you stick to uh, genre wise uh, or are you kind of meandering off into a different direction now? I think that the genre, um, which is something I've always struggled with, I guess I have trouble putting myself in a box, is, is certainly clarified. The vision of the Giant Peach has been clarified in Sleepless. Uh, mm. A listen to Pulling Teeth makes it very clear that this is an eclectic work. It, it travels from pretty straightforward indie rock to folk and to avant-garde jazz-influenced art rock and then to a jazz trio at the end of the album and it, it flips on a dime 
And um, all of those elements are still there and on Sleepless, but it's the packaging is tighter. Uh, I think I, I've come to realize the Giant Peach as a band that takes its cues primarily from folk music. Um, these are folk sentiments and folk melodies that we're singing at you, but that is packaged like indie rock and pop and mm -hmm. um, understanding how those elements work together in concert in concert huh, ha has been a journey and I think we're, we're starting to get there so I'm very excited about Sleepless it's certainly a much more mature and cohesive, ah, cohesive <laughs> project than uh, Pulling Teeth was and it's it's own animal it's very exciting well, I'd love to hear another song off the new album oh, or great. even off Pulling Teeth I mean whatever you've got next for us why don't we uh, take it back to Pulling Teeth? Yeah. Great. And then we'll finish with a new one. Um, Sleepless. So what would this, uh, so do you want to announce the next track and maybe give us a bit of a background on it? Oh yeah, so this song is called Over Again. It is a song about regret. And um, everything in this song happens twice. Hmm, all right. Musical punning. Wrapped up in each other on a Sunday night We've shut the doors and we've closed the blinds And you call me honey like you always do Well honey, honey, can you tell me what's on your mind? Is there a reason you won't meet my eye? What's wrong? You're asking so I tell you said it first I take it back as if I hadn't quite done enough I didn't mean it I didn't mean it God damn well I did it wrong I did it again is this the end I guess I said it first I take it back as if I hadn't quite done enough I didn't mean it I didn't mean it I didn't mean it hey let's do it over again Hey, let's do it over again Guess you weren't expecting all the things I said Using your hands to try and hide your head But I know, can see it in your shoulders Now I'm realizing I didn't really think this through I start to crumble as I'm watching you And I guess that I won't get another chance Did it wrong, did it again, it's 
the end I guess I said it first I take it back as if I hadn't quite done enough I didn't mean it, I didn't mean it well, God damn, well I did it wrong, I did it again Is this the end? I guess I said it first I take it back as if I hadn't quite done enough I didn't mean it, I didn't mean it I didn't mean it, hey let's do it over again Hey, let's do it over again and again and again and again and again. Hey, let's do it over again. Let's do it again. Giant Peach out with a song from their uh, first album. Oh, I've still got the reverb on. I sound very echoey now. Um, and that was called Over Again. Over Again. Yeah. Should, I should have gathered that one. Um, <laughs> and so you're saying in that that song was there's a, a lot of regret in it. Um, and but your first album that was uh, it was billed as a breakup album. Um, People so, have been saying that, yeah. Oh, so that, I I thought that's how you described it. I don't. I guess I must have at some point because everybody <laughs> everybody seems to have come to that conclusion. Um, yeah, I don't know if I have read a single review in which it wasn't described as an album about love lost. But and I suppose that's accurate. Um, it's really an album about expectation hmm. um, and idealism, and the, there's a healthy dose of cynicism in it. It's it's. I guess in a lot of ways it's sort of Bill Dungerman. It's a coming of age story. It's about uh, losing the stars from your eyes and sort of uh, taking off the rose colored glasses, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, and Sleepless, our next album, is certainly something that, that is reckoning with the wake of that. Um, it, it's about finding a new place in the world and sort of understanding the world through a new lens. And it's much more. Uh, uncertain and anxious voice on that record. So the first album's kind of realizing that life isn't this Disney uh, glorified kind of idealized world, and then the next album maybe is a little bit more mature. And I certainly think so. Yeah. I hope so. If it's a step backwards, then I'm, I'm definitely doing something <laughs> wrong. Um, but it feels to me and to my ear to be more mature, both musically and in terms of the kinds of stories I have to tell and the way that I'm telling those stories. So are the stories you draw from mainly person-to-person -person interactions or is it, it is there more individual stories in there as well? Hmm. Well, I think we should, we should be clear that this is, this is fiction. Um, it's, th there's a large degree of autobiographical sort of compression in the narrative there, and th these experiences are real, and the feelings are uh, real, and, and come straight from my life. But the scenarios that they explore are not always true to life, um, and they're generally they're generally about me. Really, just looking for a way to talk about myself. <laughs> um, oftentimes, there are other parties involved in within the narrative, but. They, they serve as an impetus for exploration of the self. And I think that that's, from a narrative point of view, I think it's more interesting, certainly, because everybody knows uh, their own personal struggles. Everybody's wrestling with something about themselves and how they relate to the world and where their place is, where they should plant their two feet and where they should want to be. But the specifics of a certain interpersonal interaction, those don't always generalize. Um, I think the details that are in the songs on Sleepless and the stories that I have to tell help ground those feelings in something tangible and make them relatable in that sense. But at the end of the day, I think the more interesting story is uh, about the self and the things we all feel. I feel like it's a rarity uh, that an album gets titled before it's finished. 
Uh, hmm. What's the story behind the title of Sleepless? Well, definitely had the title from the get-go. Um, I wrote the song Sleepless, the first song that we played tonight, and I knew that that was uh, the concept. I've always had a fascination with sleep. I think that most people who can't get any are. And um, it's, it's completely tied to where I am. Uh, to my my state in the world and oftentimes I will be up late at night mulling things over helplessly I'd much rather be asleep uh, but that seems to be there's just the perfect amount of emotional valence when you're sleep deprived to uh, travel deeper and deeper into the rabbit hole of your own thoughts and also to put them into music mm. and these songs are united by the fact that they're all written late at night um, while I was digging holes into my own consciousness. I have heard that uh, the most creative hour of the day is between 4 a.m. and 5. Oh. The, the witching hour, if you will. Yeah. Unfortunately, I do know about that. Um, <laughs> it's, cer- it's the most productive hour for having an idea, but I think the most productive hours for clarifying that idea um, generally happen during the daylight. Although yeah. whenever it strikes you is the best time to work, I guess. Whenever the muse is in the room. Yeah, I suppose it's maybe just where you get your, your the strike of genius and then it takes a, yeah. a clear head to be able to refine it. Is the rest of the band insomniatic as well? I don't know. I generally do fine sleeping. However, I do follow ideas late into the night. Um, I think that in my, in my own creative process, I... I typically won't stop to sleep, and I can't stop to sleep if, if an idea feels like it's coming mm-hmm. through me. Yeah, so that bears, uh, it bears saying that Thomas is also a, tr- a pretty uh, tremendous producer and songwriter in his own right. I'm, I'm exploring that a lot more. Yeah. exploring that a lot more. <laughs> is this, is, you got a solo uh, effort going on, or do you have another band? I have mostly been working on solo stuff. Um, Nothing released, hopefully some things released in 2019 as well, but um, we'll save that for later discussion. Oh, we'll have to, we'll <laughs> have to get you show. in when, uh, some, when you've got something out, it'll be great. Yeah, I'd love to. The, most of the rest of the band have their own project as well. Yeah, so um, Max Joshua is, is the guy we got to mention. He's out in LA doing it for real. Um, not that we're not doing yeah. it for real, we're, we're, <laughs> we're completely You're doing it for real this. here. <laughs> Um, but Max just moved out there. He's making very, very cool mix of pop and rock music. Um, and he's, he's incubating an EP right now, and I've heard some of the tracks. I'm very excited to hear what he comes up with in the end of it. He's been writing great songs for a long time, some of which have found their way onto the, our next record. Uh, we have a song from Max called Last Chance to Come Away. Uh, it's probably the most easy to love song on the record for me because I didn't write it. <laughs> and um, also because it's great. And the other person that we, we should certainly mention is uh, Mike Nunziante, who is part of a band called Alpaca. Mm-hmm. Um, they write very heartwarming folk music. It's Mike is one of the most golden-hearted people you'll ever meet, and you can sense that just sheer compassion radiating off him whenever you see him. And uh, it comes through in their music. They write... It's just a tremendous amount of um, compassion. I don't know how to say it otherwise. There's there's so much universal experience in their music, and uh, people love it. They've got a show tomorrow at Middlebury. I'm going to be playing bass. Oh, nice. With my my sliced up finger. Oh, yes. You, you were just mentioning before the show that you had a, a bit of a snafu. Yeah, I did have a bit of a snafu today. I was at work, and I uh, cut my finger open from tip to tail, basically. Ooh. But I, I, I glued it back shut so I could play here tonight. Because that's the level of dedication we have. <laughs> what under the finger is the tail? Uh, that's actually a really confusing question. It's certainly not how I meant it. <laughs> um, i got to ask you about your the name of, of the band, Giant Peach. Um, I'm a big fan of Roald Dahl. Uh, I was read Roald Dahl a lot as a kid, so I'm really hoping that is what the inspiration's from. But if it's not, please break my heart. <laughs> <laughs> We are trying to break your heart, but it does come from Ralph Dahl. Um, in high school, I had this idea to start a band called James and the Giant Peach and to write a record called Rhinoceros. 
Um, but the Raul Dahl estate quickly intervened on that idea. <laughs> I guess that I guess there's this thing called copyright law. Yeah. <laughs> did, but, did they get like a cease and desist letter? No, not a cease and desist letter. Just like a, yeah, you shouldn't do this letter. <laughs> um, there are actually plenty of bands called James and the Giant Peach. So it turns out we're relatively lucky uh, in that regard to have gone with the Giant Peach. So when we were starting this band, um, just almost a year ago, I guess. We just couldn't quite find a name, and there's something about the giant peach that seemed to summon the right collection of colors uh, in our minds, and we just went with it. And maybe because you also have a like, eclectic mix of musicians around you, like yeah. you know, James spiders and, and, yeah. and grasshoppers, <laughs> <laughs> ladybirds. <laughs> yeah, they're both stories about um, people who find themselves in a situation and then go off on a fantastical adventure and uh, meet many people and warm their hearts and then settle down in the middle of Central Park. <laughs> so that's, that's the end of the story. Nice. <laughs> <Yeah, that's> <laughs> nice. <laughs> we living in Central Park. <laughs> um, I also noticed you, you've got some wonderful posters that have been created uh, for various shows that you've oh, had. Thanks. Um, so I was wondering, you know, who, who's the artist, I mean, in the, in the drawing sense rather than musical sense in the band is it yourself yeah so um the yeah the posters are a bit of a side project um i suppose everybody needs a hobby right and i i like to doodle especially during class <laughs> um and a lot of those sort of margin musings have turned into ideas that became the album art for uh sleepless and pulling teeth we've got a single that's going to come out in a couple of weeks um, and I was just doing a little painting for that. So, yeah. I worked as a graphic designer when I was in college. So there's a bit of background there. You've, uh, you've kind of run the gamut in terms of your, your uh, college career. Yeah. Um, you, you were saying just before the show that you, you're now a PhD in neuro, neuroscience? Yeah. Yeah, so I am very lucky to be at the University of Vermont. Um, I'm doing a PhD in neuroscience there. I'm surrounded by a bunch of really fantastic scientists. Uh, often feeling out of my depth which is a good feeling to have and yeah that's so that's my day-to-day -day. it's I guess it seems like a lot of different things but really they're all kind of the same thing uh, I have this idea that science and art are both ways of looking for the truth it's just that one is a subjective claim and the other is an objective claim mm. um, so science looks at the world that we all share externally the one that we're walking around in and, and interacting in and art looks at the world internally. Uh, it's the state of things inside. Mm -hmm. And you need both. And you need both. You can't have outside without inside. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That's just science. Um, so tell me a little bit more about what you've got coming up. So you, you're aiming to get your album out, Sleepless, uh, next year. Any kind of date on that? Have you got anything set in stone, or is it still a bit nebulous? Uh, yeah, they do want the inside scoop, but we are on air. <laughs> <laughs> That's a loud secret to have. Um, Sleepless, the future of Sleepless is unclear. We have, um, I think, larger aspirations for it than we did with Pulling Teeth, and so it's a little bit open-ended as to through what veins that will end up reaching uh, the public, but it certainly will end up reaching the public one way or another. Um, on the other hand, we have the single I-89 that we're going to be putting out um, just into the world in just a couple of weeks. December 14th is the date we've decided on for that. Um, and we're very excited about that song. It, it pits Solitude, 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 and the uh, sort of ruminative feeling of going nowhere against the Vermont landscape um, in the face of a fresh snow. So it's it's very topical for the environment we find ourselves in today. <laughs> Hence I eighty nine as well. Yes, yeah. I just had a very scary drive down I eighty nine uh, in the middle of a blizzard last week, actually, and it's definitely taken me back to other times I've done that <laughs> I've, uh, I've done a full 360 on the i89 before and have you my friend's car as well luckily there was n nothing behind me for a good mile or so but yeah, yeah it's oh quite the experience just pulling some tricks <laughs> yeah. off in the yeah. <laughs> just doing donuts casually on the interstate <laughs> middle of the highway yeah um 
And I also read that you've got a residency coming up, so tell me a bit more about that. We do have a that. residency coming up. Uh, we're going to be at the Radio Bean. Um, it's where we played our first show, and it's where we're going to do our first residency, it seems. So we'll be there every Thursday of January. This is a great month to do it, because it turns out there are actually six Thursdays in January. <laughs> um, so you'll have six opportunities to catch us there. I think we're on at 7 p.m., and yeah, we're going to try to do something different every week. Um, so it'll be, even if you're hearing the same songs and the same ideas, they're going to be articulated in totally different ways, and it's a great opportunity for us to explore a lot of the stuff that doesn't make it onto the record, um, mm-hmm. or the more choreographed live shows that you see. Mm-hmm. This is a bit of a freer form experiment that we're going to be going on. And is it going to be just the two of you? Are you going to be adding other musicians into it? How many? Is, or is it going to change from week to week? From week to week, I think it'll be whoever can come, whoever's in the family. They'll be uh, making an appearance. So it could be anything from a sort of jazzier, paired back thing to having the violin and the slide guitar, a more folk ensemble, or like what you guys are hearing today. Um, we're going all over the place. Wonderful. And uh, any other gigs apart from the residency coming up? I think that's it on the books right now. We've got some other things that are in the work for the spring, but uh, we've been playing, the, the band is a little scattered, so we've got some members who are abroad, um, eating lots of good food, and other members who are moving around, so the lineup is not set in a hard and fast way, uh, which is exciting. Yeah. But well, we've certainly been taking a break from the live performances just in the process of recording this album and uh, figuring out where we're going to go next. It sounds like you uh, collaborate with a lot of exciting people. I um, certainly do, yeah. I'm very, very lucky in that regard. The the downside of being friends with exciting people is they're often doing their own thing. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I didn't know that Thomas was coming tonight until earlier this afternoon. So it's, This is true. Mm-hmm bit of a last minute thing but that's the beauty of it is we have people who know our music all over the place and they're always ready to hop in and be a part of the show you can always just lasso one of them and bring exactly. them to your next project <laughs> yeah um, well before uh, I get you to play your last song um, do you want to plug your, some of your social media and where you can find uh, your, your previous record and where we'll be able to find your next record oh sure yeah so we are almost always at the Giant Peach Band um, don't forget the the, because if you just search Giant Peach, you're going to get a sort of hardcore band from Brooklyn. Uh, <laughs> and they're, they're quite good, but it's a different scene. Uh, our music, so if you check out our website, thegiantpeachband.com, we're on Instagram, at the Giant Peach Band. Um, any major music platform, you can find our music, our first record, Pulling Teeth, and all of the music that is coming. We have a total backlog of it, so we're very excited about that. Uh, And that would be great. Anything you guys can do, the best thing you can do is tune in, stick with us, and tell people about our music. So go follow us on Spotify, go follow us on Instagram, join our newsletter, (laughs) do all the things. And uh, check out the sort of scene that's growing around the Giant Peach as well. Check out Alpaca Music, uh, do a casual Facebook stock of Max Joshua, and just sort of see what's out there. Because there's a lot out there that's ready to be loved. Wonderful. Um, well, I'd love to hear one last song from you. Uh, do you want to introduce it and maybe give it a big ba- bit of background to it? Sure. Uh, this one's called Whatever I've Got. I guess it's about loneliness. Um, it's about loneliness and it's about the lies that we tell ourselves to um, convince ourselves that things are things are all good when they're not and if you tell enough of them you'll eventually get to a place where they are all good fake it till uh, you make it (laughs) yeah yeah so that's that's the (laughs) the emotional note that we wanted to end on (laughs) for you guys this is called whatever I've got Yesterday I watched the sun creep through my room I 
prayed that sleep would find me soon Or even dreaming Spent the evening keeping all these thoughts at bay And people say It seems you know everyone here Can you imagine something lonelier than that? To be alone and know there's no one left to save you Anyway I try to trust in what I hear I clutch my fabrications near And pull them close as if the truth could give a damn about my comfort And I'll be fine in the end I know I'll be fine at the end of this I'll be fine with whatever I've got Just give it to me now I'm okay I keep my head and heart from sinking I never let myself think all that much about it I don't doubt that things are just the way they should be Yesterday I reached a hand out in the night I felt a shoulder pull back right as I grew near And asked myself what have you gotten yourself into And we'll be fine in the end I know you'll be fine at the end of this I'll be fine with whatever I get Just give it to me now I know, I know You've been counting down the days I know, I know It's getting to you too I know, I know And the truth is coming due I've been thinking about leaving For a matter of months Cause this is driving me crazy And enough is enough Try to say how I feel But that's just pushing my luck I'll be fine in the end I know I'll be fine At the end of this I'll be fine With whatever I've got Just give it to me now Giant Peach there with whatever I've got. Thank you guys so much for coming in. This has been wonderful. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you. No worries. Uh, certainly go check them out uh, when they've got the residency at Radio B. And you can also find them on Spotify. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to your new album coming out. So when it does, please come back in again. Thanks, Tom. No worries. Um, this has been The Rocket Shop. Uh, next week, we have got Antara coming in. Uh, so stick around for that next week. Um, thank you guys all for listening tonight, and I'll take you back then. <laughs>